What's up guys, reviews TIJ and welcome to a new video and today it's the first episode of my annual team review series. Obviously we're starting with Caterham today as we're going from 11th on the constructor standings to the top with Mercedes. Joining me for the second time um, in two years is Ben for this season. What up peeps? Well not the season but the series. But as I said earlier we're going to be talking about Caterham today and just an introduction to this video we just want to give you a couple of stats about the team. So the team has attended 17 of the 19 races this season obviously missing um, USA and Brazil due to financial issues. Uh, Ericsson had the best finish of the season for Caterham with 11th in Monaco nearly nearly grabbing some points for him. And Kamui Kobayashi did the best qualifying, actually in Australia, qualifying 14th, only to be wiped out at the first corner by a certain Felipe Massa. And the overall in the team, they had, I think it was 11 or 12 retirements. Yeah. Um, we had Ericsson retire five times, Kobayashi six times, and then when they had Lotter in the car for a race, he retired. So, And uh, I think there was one more, but uh, I think that was a driver that we don't really care about. <laughs> oh, fair enough. But yeah, um, it has been a weird old season for Caterham. And in these 10 or so minutes, you're going to see us discussing Caterham. Um, but yeah, let's get started. So, uh, Ben, let's get out to you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> best, what, what, in, what, in your opinion, what was the best individual race for any of the drivers and uh, the best team race? Well, obviously, the best race um, for Ericsson was obviously Monaco, um, nearly finishing in the points. As obviously, uh, Jules Bianchi did finish in the points. Quite a few uh, top drivers um, not finishing in that race. And a pretty good race and a very interesting one, actually. I thought a uh, couple of people might disagree with me, but oh well. Um, Kamui's best race, probably have to say... Um, it's a tough one, that is, with Kimi, because there's a... Uh, not Kimi, Kamui, because there's a lot of races that he hasn't really shone and it's tough to pick out a good one um, so I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Malaysia obviously he beat his teammate um, he retired in the first race decision that was a bit of a knockout blow really um, and he's returned to Formula 1 but he came back in Malaysia to beat his teammate um, his inexperienced teammate and yeah um, finished 13th at the Malaysian Grand Prix so not really far away from points and that was probably that and possibly Monaco was probably the team's best race um, the only difference with Monaco is that Ericsson finished 11th uh, finished 14th in Malaysia um, but Malaysia was a good race for the team um, the second highest finish of the year um, for, uh, well, for the highest finish of the year for Kobayashi, obviously with Ericsson getting 11th in Monaco. But yeah, I think it was a good race for them. Probably Monaco was probably the best of the season, but quite a few drivers retired from that race, so I'm going to say Malaysia as that. So um, mm -hmm. have you got anything to add to that, Ben? No, to be honest with you, I completely agree. There's not, okay. there's not many good races for Caterham, but I think Malaysia and Monaco are probably the standout one. Okay, so actually, obviously no, um, about a month ago now, I think, um, Caterham actually went into administration. Um, it all really started back in June um, with Tony Fernandez leaving the team, obviously to concentrate on his newly promoted team, QPR, into the Premier League. Um, and the team have really gone downwards since then, and they did announce um, about a month ago that they've gone into administration. And um, over to you, Ben, to talk about their financial situation this year. Right, so obviously uh, their financial situation is very different to any of the mid-pack teams, never mind the top teams. Um, there's been a lot of talk about how Bernie and the FIA have been distributing the money they make from Formula 1. And it seems that the, the top teams are getting some funding from the FIA, whereas the bottom teams aren't. And you can understand from a business point of view where they're coming from with that, because the, the bottom teams just don't appear on telly. Um, they're not in the limelight of the sport. And they don't get much attention. However, I th to be honest with you, I think for the good of the sport, they need to be there. Um, it was very, very sad when um, we lost both of the teams uh, for two races, the Marussia team and the Caterham team. They both went down very different routes, though, in terms of trying to get back into the sport. Marussia uh, are looking for kind of internal help, uh, new owners, maybe investors. But uh, Caterham went down the route of... Uh, kind of fan funding, so you go on a website, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and you donate to the team, 
and you get rewarded by like they give I, I looked at it and they they gave away like t-shirts hats and whatnot and if you paid a lot of money you get to go out with the driver for a night so there you go um but yeah d very different routes i think uh, the FIA weren't very happy, uh, particularly Bernie. I think he said it was a disgrace what Caterham were doing, asking the crowd for funding. But uh, yeah, very diff very different from any of the other years. Uh, I think, like Toby said, it was since uh, Tony Fernandez left. Um, I think it just messed them up really. And um, yeah, I think we're going to talk about uh, what we think they're going to do next year later. But I think we're going to go on to five thoughts from the community about Caterham this year. Yeah, I'd just like to add before we go on to that, the fact that I don't really see why Bernie's saying it's a disgrace because at the end of the day, if they're not getting fundy from, uh, fundy, funding from Bernie, you know, he's got to see if, if they've got to see if they can get funding from elsewhere. And they did turn to the crowd and, you know, they raised over £2 million, pounds, so fair play to them. And as Ben said, we are going to go on to five thoughts about Caterham. Um, which is new for this year. Um, I asked you guys on Twitter yesterday, um, what are your thoughts on Caterham this season? Um, we only got four thoughts, unfortunately, for this episode. But, um, yeah, Ben's going to start with the first point from Harry. So, Harry at HW Divider, I'm sure some of you know who he is, has said five years, no points, not much else to, set, to be said. And to be honest with you, I can't blame him. Um, I think when... HRT and Lotus, well, they were Lotus at the time, and um, Virgin at the time joined the sport. I think they were thinking it was going to be um, a chance for them to climb the sport and, you know, maybe be in the mid pack by now, but it really hasn't worked out. HRT are gone. Um, Virgin went to Marussia. Marussia's out of business. They're gone. Uh, well, as far as we know. And obviously now Caterham are gone. And it was only Marussia. Only Marussia scored points out of all those three teams. And it was actually, unfortunately, the year that they've basically less, left the sport. So I completely agree with what Harry said. And Toby, do you want to go on to the next point? So from F1 Maestro 26, same as his um, Twitter, whatever you call it. Twitter tag, Handle. we'll call it for yeah. this. Uh, um, he says better than last year, but not as good as 2012. I can agree with him there. Um, obviously, you can say that HRT were in the sport in that year and Marussia weren't as good and strong as they were in 2013. Um, so, yeah, Caterham weren't good in 2012. However, it was pretty easy to beat HRT because HRT was a terrible car that year. And um, I think it was Marussia. They were Marussia in that year, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. they did turn to Marussia then. Um, but Marussia weren't, weren't as good. But obviously, the next year, um, when they appointed Bianchi and Chilton... And they're a much better team, but definitely, yes, better than last year. Not as good as 2012. Obviously, we'll be talking a lot more about Marussia next episode. So the next point from Stockmat 1998. Uh, it says, not very well. As in, I'm assuming he's talking about their season. Hasn't gone very well. But you can't blame them due to their lack of funds. And we've already spoken about their financial situation, and it is completely correct. I mean, it, I, I think if any team had as much money as Mercedes or Red Bull, they'd be up there. Um, it's just how they spend the money they've got, I think. And I can't see them doing much better with the amount of money they've got. But um, there's not much else to be said uh, on that point. Yep, so last one from Dark Sonic, which his Twitter handle is at Dark Benny. Um, you can probably see on the screen, but uh, I'm going to change it a little bit because I don't really want swearing in this video. But um, let me quote Kimmy on this one. I'm going to say naff, but you know what it says. Um, really bad year, Ericsson's slow, car not competitive. Um, I kind of disagree, actually, for the second part of the season with a second point because I don't know about you, Ben, but I think Ericsson's proved himself and that's why he's going to be in F1 next season with um, Sauber. But definitely the start of the season, Ericsson wasn't very good. But let's say it, Camus Kobayashi has been in F1 a long time, hasn't he? Mm. And the car hasn't been competitive this year at all whatsoever. Probably with the engine, they didn't have a Mercedes engine, obviously. Um, Rusha had a Ferrari engine. I think probably the Ferrari engine is the second best on the grid with the Renault being the third best and what you think of that Ben but uh, we'll talk about that a bit later um, but yeah he said really bad year Ericsson slow and car not competitive so if there's anything else you'd like to add please add it to well, uh to add to that Toby I, I can see where you're coming from where Ericsson's proved himself um, he's definitely not in my opinion a future world champion oh no no, no. <laughs> but I don't think he's um, a good driver 
he's just had an okay second part of the season. I think the only reason he's still got a seat in Formula One is because he brings a lot of money to the sport. Yeah, it's the unfortunate bit really about F1, and um, we obviously haven't really got time to talk about no. that now. But it is a very um, well an issue that needs to be sorted out really mm -hmm. in Formula One. Um, but off the five points about Caterham, um, it's the second half of this video, and Ben's going to um, ask me the next question. I am, and uh, Toby, I just want to ask you, how do you think the two drivers, the two main drivers that drove most of the races, uh, being Kobayashi and Ericsson, have done this season? Well, obviously, I was just talking about that a little bit, um, about Ericsson improving the second half of the season. Actually, his results weren't so good the second half of the season. Obviously, his best result coming in Monaco, um, in uh, obviously, in Monaco with 11th place. Um, but the main thing is he has been quite consistent over the uh, second part of the season, really, um, because, you know, he scored 17th in Belgium, 19th in Italy, 15th in Singapore, and 17th in Japan, which for a caterham is actually pretty decent, especially 15th in Singapore. Singapore. Um, he has probably improved over the second half of the season and I know Kamubi Kobayashi is getting on a bit and he's quite he's getting a bit older now but Kobayashi probably has trained him a little bit um, you know just to get used to the car obviously coming out of I think GP2 last year I uh, can't really remember now that back far but anyway uh, moving on to Kobayashi um, he's had a decent season but being away from F1 for one year really really didn't help him as you can see his best result was um, 13th place in both Malaysia and Monaco but apart from that he hasn't really shone at all this season um, with 215 places in Great Britain and Bahrain um, and 16th place, 17th place, 18th place is there and there. Um, he has had five retirements this year, which is one more than actually, it's, yeah, five, to, is it six? I no, it's six it's retirements, it, yeah. yeah. Um, with Ericsson having, I think that's four. Um, five. That's no, five. Oh, my eyes are deceiving me today. Um, but Kobayashi, obviously, you know, the car's not so reliable, so you can't really say much on that, but. Been a decent season for Kobayashi, but I think sadly it's going to be Kamui's last in F1. Yeah, I agree. So, Ben, I'm just going to ask you now. We talked a little bit about this earlier. Um, what are your thoughts on Caterham going into 2015? Will they be here for the whole season? Or? Um, well, I think you said earlier that they offered, was it Jolien Palmer? A, yes, Jolien Palmer. They offered him yeah. a contract um, with the team. Now, that would strongly suggest that they are going to be here next season, uh, be in sport next season. Um, I think they're still going to just be one of the slowest teams in the in, in, at the back of the grid. And if um, Manor F1 team don't get their act together and they aren't there next season, who are Caterham going to have to compete against? Yeah, it's kind of kind of been a bit of a boring season. If they can't improve that car, they're just going to be all together at the back. Yeah. And just going on to that Jolie and Palmer point, yes, um, he actually um, rejected the offer, I think, according to the Telegraph. But with the pace that the Caterham's got, the lack of pace that Caterham's got, I'm not surprised that he rejected the contract, really. No, and the fact that they're an unstable team at, the, at this current moment in time. Um, I think if any GP2 driver wanted to get into Formula 1, they'd want to be in a team... A mid-pack team, um, you know, like when, uh, obviously, Kvyat, he wasn't in GP2, but he went into the Toro Rosso team. They're a solid team. Teams like that, teams like Force India, who are improving, I think, um, but we'll talk about them in another episode. Um, that's the sort of teams that GP2 drivers go into. If, I think if I was a GP2 driver and I just won the championship, um, Caterham would not be one of the teams I want to go to, particularly with their financial situation, which we spoke about earlier. Um, but... Caterham in 2015, um, if they are there, like we said, I, they won't have anybody to compete against if they don't improve. Um, but I can't see them improving with the funds they've got. So um, if they're in 2015, it's going to be a tough season. Uh, if they're not in 2015, then I, I suppose they can concentrate on uh, stuff elsewhere. Yeah, I suppose. I uh, just want to add in there, obviously, it looks like they're going to be here next year. Who do you think the lineup will be? It <sighs> um, is a tough one, I know. God knows, they'll probably find some kid off the street um, who take a tanner. Um, but I don't know. Uh, what Those drivers that they used in Abu Dhabi, uh, well, they used that uh, Will Stevens guy, yeah? Yeah. It, what is he? Is he like their test driver or...? 
Well, I don't know. Apparently, he's in Formula Renault 3.5, and apparently, he played in excess of over half a million to get that drive in that um, in that weekend. So obviously, he was a pay driver, but uh. I doubt he'll be here next year. But oh well, we'll see how it goes. It'd be nice to see a British driver on the grid, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, because by the looks of it, the only British driver next year is going to be Hamilton. But um, yeah, I don't know. Their lineup could be oh, to anybody. Well, okay then, so that nicely concludes that subject. So we're coming to the end of the video, but before we finish, um, we're going to give Kate from a rating. Um, it's going to be a very hard one, isn't it, really? Because, like I just said, like I said earlier in the video, they haven't really performed this season, have they? Well, no, but they haven't performed in any of the seasons. But yeah. Well, yeah, I suppose. Um, what rating would you give them? Um, well, we've got to think about the rate. We can't just rate them on, on their, you know, based on their past performances because then when we get to teams like Mercedes uh, Caterham might be kind of similar but um, <laughs> I think I'm just going to have to give them probably a 2 2? Two? Yeah. <laughs> okay, out of 10 we're going out of 10 alright then 2 out of 10 <laughs> that sounds decent um, so um, I will be asking on Twitter probably even before this comes out um, what your thoughts are on Marussia oh sorry Sabre not Marussia Chill out, Toby. Um, <laughs> uh, my fo your thoughts on Sauber of this season. So make sure to um, check my Twitter out if it's, um, it's already been posted. But I hope you have enjoyed the first episode of the Caterham um, team review. Um, and if you've got any thoughts, please put them down in the comments. I'd love to have a discussion with you guys in the comments, me and Ben. And I think that pretty much wraps it up for this video. So um, I'll see you later, guys. Goodbye. See ya.